हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द वायर वाउंड थिन सिलेंडर्स देर आर थिन सिलेंडर्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड एंड नाउ द थिन सिलेंडर्स आर वायर वाउंड राइट वी आर वाउंडेड द वायर्स अराउंड ए थिन सिलेंडर टाइटली वी हैव वाउंड सो दैट सम टेंशन इज डेवलप इन द वायर्स and there is some compression before the uh, pressure is applied uh, some compression is developed in the cylinder but why we are doing this why we are wounding the wire around a cylinder right uh, you can think of uh, the concept of pre stress right uh, this is the concept of pre stressing the material if we pre stress the material if after the uh, fluid pressure is applied there are uh, hoop stresses are tensile then if we pre stress the material with compressive stresses then uh, when the tensile stresses will be developed in the hoop stresses then first this compression will be taken care of and after that the stresses will be developed hoop stresses will be developed in the material so material will be stronger right uh, and you know that the failure take place due to hoop stresses because hoop stresses are higher compared to the longitudinal stresses that's why we are wiring this on the circumferential uh, axis on the entire length of the uh, cylinder right so so uh, the, there is, we are pre stressing the pre stress the cylinder material material <coughs> this is compressive stress basically which type of stress we are developing in, in it is compressive stress because due to pressure uh, tensile stresses are developed hoop stresses are tensile and uh, this compressive stresses will be released first and then the other stresses will be developed so pre stressing is the cylinder material compressive stress and to increase the strength strength of the material right so this is called this is the concept of wire wound thin cylinders right so mathematical concept now come to the mathematical concept what are the relations uh, developed in this case so there are two we can categorize into two parts one is the before applying the pressure the pressure the means fluid is not admitted first before admitting the fluid what is happening right so let us take the case one before admitting the fluid that fluid is not admitted before admitting the fluid fluid is not admitted what is going to happen we have stressed this wire uh, the wire is in tension tensile stresses are developed and due to that there is some deformation decrease in length and compression in the uh, cylinder thickness thickness of the cylinder right so and and we are not applying any external force due to this tightening of this wire compressive stresses are developed in the material right so both the stresses should be equal so uh, tension tension force in wire before before admitting the fluid should be equal to the compressive force in cylinder compressive force developed in cylinder right so what is the tension force in wire suppose the tension force in wire is sigma w suppose the tension force in wire is sigma w and the compressive force in this is uh, sigma h in circumferential direction sigma h so this is tension this is compression right so sigma w is the stress developed in the material multiplied by the area multiplied by the area and we can see here if we cut the section we will find these two types of areas here right which is uh, taking this stress and equalizing these stresses so two times of pi by 4 dw square here dw is the diameter of the wire dw square multiplied by number of turns n and that is equal to number of turns of the wire how many terms are there 
multiplied by the number of tons and that will be equal to compressive force developed in the material that is equal to sigma h multiplied by the this thickness t multiplied by l this t this t thickness on this area it is happening and this is the length length of the wire is l right so this length length of the wire l right so this will be two times because there are two materials are there so two times l multiplied by t right so from here we can find out the hoop stress that sigma h is given by sigma h will be given by you can solve it and find the value of sigma h so it will come out to be pi by 2 to 2 cancel pi by 40 pi by 40 dw square is there now uh, first before we find this find out the value of n what is n number of tons number of tons of the wire right so number of tons of the wire can be found out by l by dw if l is the length and dw is the uh, one ton so for one ton for one ton the length is the, that only dw for l tons the length will be total l right so, so number of tons will become n time n will become l by dw or you can write the total length will be equal to the total number of tons multiplied by the uh, one turn is dw right so n times dw because we are assuming that there is no space in between and it is consecutive wires are bound right so this is the number of tons that is l by dw or l the total length is composed of number of tons multiplied by the one length of one wire and that is dw in this direction right so here you can put the value of n so you will get sigma w multiplied by 2 multiplied by pi by 4 dw square multiplied by n n is l by dw so l by dw that will equal to sigma h multiplied by 2 multiplied by l multiplied by t so from here now the hoop stress initial hoop stress before admitting the pressure or fluid the hoop stress can be obtained as 2 to 2 cancel pi by 40 t will come in the denominator so pi by 40 dw dw cancel out one dw will be left so dw and then sigma w so this is the relation between the stress in wire and stress in uh, material and that is compressive stress right sigma h right so this is the first equation that is important equation here the terms used are here the terms what we have used is sigma h that is the hoop stress in material of cylinder before pressure p is applied right and sigma w is the and this is compressive this is compressive you must know that this is compressive and sigma w is the tensile stress developed in wire tensile stress stress tension in wire right tensile stress developed in wire and n is equal to total number of tons which we have find out l by dw and what is dw what is dw that is dw is the small dia of the wire right this wire has a dia of dw dw right so this is using diameter of wire isn't it so this is the dia of the wire and l is the length of the cylinder you know l is equal to length of cylinder and on the entire length we have put the uh, this wire wire wound right on the entire length so this is how one in relation is found out when there is no fluid admitted before admitting the fluid we are getting compressive stress in the circumferential direction that is also called hoop stress and uh, there is tension in wire so both the forces due to tensile stress in wire and due to compressive stress in uh, cylinder are equal 
So from here we have got the relation between hoof stress and the stress in wire. Now let us take the second case. Second case that now the fluid is admitted and due to that admission of the fuel fluid there is some pressure on this part and due to which due to this pressure P acting on the diameter part this is trying to burst so there is some resisting force developed in the material and some resisting force will be developed so resisting tensile stress will be developed so this resisting tensile stress will be developed in uh, the material of the steel uh, this whatever material is there of the cylinder and some tensile stress more tensile stress are developed in the wire suppose sigma w dash and sigma h dash to separate between two, two terms before uh, admission of the fluid after admission of the fluid so this is the tensile stress developed in the that is hoof stress in the material of the cylinder and tensile stress developed in the material of the wire so this is the uh, stress is developed after admitting the fluid right and both are tensile both are tensile because both are trying to increase the length of the cylinder and due to that tensile strain there is tensile stress developed in the material right so what is the relation what is the relation between this this bursting force and this resisting stresses right resisting force so after admitting the after admitting the fluid the fluid is now admitted and what is going to happen now right so the uh, force due to this pressure that is called diametrical pressure or the bursting force the diametrical bursting force bursting force is taken care by the resisting stresses like this resisting forces by the these two stresses right so this is equal to resisting force resisting force right for static equilibrium these two forces should be equal so now in this case you can see there that in the previous case when there was no wire was there the resistance force were taken by only sigma h the hoop stress of the material right now the resisting force is taken by sigma w as well as sigma h and that will be shared right so that's why this is the strength of the material got increased because now the resistance is done by these two things right and both are trying to resist that this pressure right so if this pressure is diametrical on the this dia on this dia projected length projected length is a dia of the cylinder multiplied by the length l so this p this uh, diametrical bursting force will be equal to p multiplied by d multiplied by l the projected length d multiplied by the length of the cylinder and that will be equal to resisting force due to hoop stress that is sigma h dash multiplied by 2 multiplied by l multiplied by t on this area and this area two two areas are there plus wire the stress is developed in the wire multiplied by the area that is area is pi by 4 uh, two times two times because one on this side and one on this side when we are when we are seeing through the cut, cut section so two times pi by 4 dw square multiplied by number of tons and what are the number of tons that is again l by dw l by dw so this is the uh, this is the equation for bursting force and resisting force equalization right so from here l will cancel out l l and l cancel out so you will get one more equation pd will be equal to pd will be equal to 2t sigma h dash 2t sigma h dash plus plus dw dw cancel out l again cancel out 2 to 4 so you will get the it should be pi by 2 
पाई बाय टू पाई बाय टू पाई बाय टू डी डब्ल्यू डी डब्ल्यू सिग्मा डब्ल्यू डैश सिग्मा डब्ल्यू डैश राइट सो लेट मी कंफर्म दिस इज पाई बाय टू डी डब्ल्यू डी डब्ल्यू सिग्मा डब्ल्यू डैश राइट सो दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर टू फर्स्ट इक्वेशन वॉज द प्रीवियस वन दिस इज द सेकेंड इक्वेशन एंड वेवर वेयर एवर दिस विल बी रिक्वायर्ड वी विल यूज दिस इक्वेशन इन आवर नोमेरिकल पर्पज राइट सो दिस गिव्स द रिलेशन दिस अगेन गिव्स द रिलेशन बिटवीन द हुप स्ट्रेस एंड द स्ट्रेस इज डेवलप इन द वायर आफ्टर द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ द फ्लूड वेन द प्रेशर पी इज अप्लाइड सो दिस रिलेशन विल बी यूज समवेयर वेन एवर इट विल बी रिक्वायर्ड राइट no after admitting the fluid but these are two unknowns these are two unknowns sigma h dash and sigma w dash two unknowns are there so after admitting the fluid both are trying to increase their length as the material of the cylinder is increasing because of the tensile stresses the wire uh, the wire is also increasing dimensions of wire is also increasing right and because both are increasing simultaneously so the strain developed in the cylinder should be equal to strain developed in the wire right because one more equation is required here so one more equation can be obtained from here that the strain developed in cylinder we are talking about after admission of the fluid strain developed in the cylinder should be equal to strain in wire strain in wire that's why both are increasing in the same dimensions otherwise they cannot increase in same dimensions so change in length is same it means strain developed in cylinder should be equal to strain developed in the wire so what is strain developed in the cylinder so there are two forces are there uh, this is sigma w and sigma h is there sigma w dash and sigma h dash right so we are strain here when we are talking about strain here this is basically circumferential strain right so we are talking about the circumferential strain that is circumferential strain right so this is hoop strain or circumferential strain circumferential strain <coughs> circumferential strain in wire in uh, wire as well as in Uh, that uh, cylinder so circumferential strain what is and then what is the strain circumferential what is the strain circumferential strain in the wire in, in the cylinder in the cylinder so there are two types of stresses are there two types of stresses are there one is hoop stress and another is longitudinal stress so if you are taking hoop stress in this direction so i can show here only sigma h dash this is sigma h dash and there is a longitudinal direction in this direction sigma l suppose this is also dash although there there is no sigma l uh, because before application of the fluid there was no sigma l no stress developed in longitudinal direction but after application of the fluid there are both stresses are there sigma l dash uh, we are writing directly sigma l dash so that it may be seems uh, similar and sigma h dash sigma dash dash is the hoop stress right so strain in uh, hoop direction or circumferential direction is given by sigma h dash by e by e of the cylinder minus mu times sigma l dash upon e of the cylinder so this is the strain developed in the cylinder in circumferential direction or hoop direction right and that should be equal to strain developed in the wire so that should be equal to sigma w dash upon e w so e w is the suppose modulus of elasticity of the wire uh, because it may be possible that these have different uh, modulus of elasticity the cylinder has different modulus of elasticity and wire has different modulus of elasticity maybe both are of different materials right so this is the one more equation to find out the relation between sigma h dash and sigma w dash so uh, there are two unknowns sigma h dash and sigma w dash and these two unknowns can be obtained using these equations right 
so whenever required this equation will be used in our mathematical calculation or numericals right here one more thing is there sigma l dash elongation strain and that is same as usual as usual as we discussed previously and sigma l dash that will be same as we have already solved this problem in a without without using wire same will remain same here so this is the sigma l dash sigma l dash due to this uh, pressure p applied p on this area so p multiplied by pi by 4 d square that is the bursting pressure in this direction and that will be equal to sigma l dash multiplied by pi dt pi d into t so you will get sigma l dash as usual that is pd by 40 pd by 40 which can be used in this equation in this equation right so equation number 4 this 4 can be used in this equation so we will be having two unknowns basically sigma w dash and sigma h dash so sigma h dash and sigma w dash can be obtained using equation number 2 and 3 so so solving solving 2 and 3 equation number 2 and 3 sigma w dash and sigma h dash can be obtained right so this is the concept of wire wound thin cylinders